Hey, it's Joseph here. I'm always late to the game of covering the new releases of software, but it also seems better late than never. It actually seems that SketchUp version 2021.1 version was released on June 8th, so hopefully I'm not too late. I always am trying to keep myself up to date with the latest tools that are available for AC industry and as you know it can be difficult at times. Anyways that is exactly why you are here watching this video today so, so let's see what has changed on SketchUp 2021.1 version. There's actually two different blog posts as well as a release note that are available to you. I'll leave a link to both of the documents in the description for you guys to have a read if you want to read through those things. But I know you are here to watch it rather than read it yourself. So I will go ahead and do that. And whilst at it, I'm going to provide my personal thoughts or maybe a little bit of trick behind some of the things that has been added. I do want to make it clear that this is not a major release as it is not the year where it becomes 2020 to 2021 version or 2022 version. So it is not really the major update. It is more incremental type of update where just 0.1 or 0.2 has been added to the number. So we're not expecting to see any major upgrade or features that has been added to the version, but it is definitely worth taking a look. And after going through the entire list of changed features or added features, it is clear that SketchUp team was trying to bring consistency to the tools that you have available inside of SketchUp. So if you're a new user, you probably wouldn't really notice anything really. But if you're a type of experienced user like myself who does things with muscle memory, some of the things that you might actually notice that has changed on this new release. So let's get into more detail. The first one that I want to mention is actually the modifier toggles. The modifier keys are basically a couple of keys that are on the side of your keyboard that basically modifies the functionality of the tools such as shift, control, alt, or maybe options or command in Mac version, but I won't be talking about Mac version. So for Windows users, it's just limited to Control, Shift, and Alt keys. So for example, if you were to go to Move Tool, and then if you hit Control key once, you will see a little plus sign that shows up next to your cursor, and then you'll be able to copy over an object instead of just moving it. If you did not have that, you'll basically use a move tool and then you'll literally move it. Whereas if you hit control key once, you'll be copying it to the new place. So, so that is the functionality of the modifier key where you hit the control key, toggle that on, then you introduce the additional feature to the move tool. So nothing has changed in this regard. However, if you were to go to scale tool, when you actually had to change something from the center, you actually had to hold down control key. And if I actually hold down control key now, nothing really happens. Actually, when you let it go, it now is going to stretch from the middle. And if you actually take a look at bottom of the screen whilst having the scale tool active, it will say control key to toggle scale about center and shift toggle uniform scale. So everything is a toggle, which means you tap the key instead of holding it down. So it used to be that you had to hold down control key to scale things about center. I actually don't like the word about, I think it makes more more sense to say from center when you hit control key once it is going to stretch from the center or about the center instead of holding it down now you can just toggle it on so your left hand could be free from the keyboard therefore you can either drink coffee or actually type in dimensions so there is an extra functionality that gets introduced as you can let go of your hand so the weird thing about this was that you can see on the bottom right hand corner as you kind of move notice that I'm actually not holding my key down I'm just moving the mouse so this is a very important sketchup behavior you need to keep in mind especially if you're a new user you want to be mindful of not dragging things 
ever. And when you do that, now I can type in something like two enter or three enter. Now I have scaled with that specific scale that I have typed in. Before, when you actually had to hold down the key, I couldn't type in anything because I'm actually holding down the control key. So what I actually had to do before was that when I scale something from center, I click on arbitrary point and then type in the scale that I want to scale it to. So for example, two, three, and actually here is an additional point. You can type in a dimension with a unit. So for example, I can say 10 feet enter and then it is going to stretch to 10 feet if it is 60 inches then i can just type in that dimension and then it is going to stretch accordingly so when i wasn't able to let go of my key before this release i actually had to put it on an arbitrary scale and type in the exact dimension afterwards but now i can actually type in exact dimension as i can let go of my key so quite a good change i would have to say So one practical way I could actually kind of think of at the moment that this could apply handy is when you have a table and a chair set and let's say you have increased the amount of chair that you want on the specific table and a chair set. I know it is a simple geometry rather, but let's just imagine things. And now you have introduced more chairs around, now I want this to be stretched. And once I do that, I can kind of do a stretching like so and if you have trouble landing your cursor over a geometry that you can't see you can actually hit K once and then things will actually start to appear as, as a dotted line as well as these points so you can easily reference those points so there is a little tip there but obviously I just done twice one scaling on this side and then another scaling on that side so I can actually undo that and then basically click on this move your cursor and then i can toggle on the about center key which is control just tap that once and then i can now increase to there and now the table is big enough to capture all eight seats that are available and let me also give you another example let's say i had a circle and then actually if i explode the curve then as i push pull that you'll see all sorts of edges that gets introduced on its side. Now I can take actually eraser tool and if you actually look at the bottom of the screen and it will say control to toggle soften and smooth and alt to toggle on the unsmooth and unhide and shift to toggle hide. And if you were to use the eraser tool or maybe rubber tool or those of you who are across the pond. Now, instead of holding down shift key to hide things, you can actually just toggle on so hit shift key once and then let go of your hand now you can see the cursor looks different as well as i can just kind of go across it and hide those edges if i were to soften it again i just hit the control key once and let go of my hand and i can go over them and i can soften and smooth those edges and if i want to bring that back i can hit alt once to go into this mode and then basically go over them to bring them back kind of sharper edge. One thing to keep in mind here is that I can actually still hold down shift key and then drag across this and then hide the edges because my muscle memory still tells me to hold it down because that's how the tool used to work when I was learning SketchUp. Now I can toggle on, so it is going to take some sort of practice for me to get that as I feel that is a better method, although I need to retrain my muscle memory. However, it is a good thing that SketchUp accepts both of the method, so either you hold it down versus toggle it on, both of the method will work and actually depending on how long you have held down the specific key, SketchUp will actually figure out whether you were trying to hold it down versus toggle it on. So will you be a toggler or a holder? 
which now brings us to the sticky modifiers. This actually means that once you have applied the modifier to tool, it will actually stay. And on the cursor of this eraser tool, you can actually see the altered state of this tool. If I hit shift key once more, you see how that goes away and it has been toggled off. But once I have turned it on, I can hide all of these edges. Let's say I hide these and then as I move more, and I can still go over more as the modifier has sort of sticky behavior. So it is going to continue behaving the same way until I move on to a different tool such as push-pull and then come back to eraser tool. Then now it is not going to be modified anymore. So that is definitely a good thing if I were to go back to the state where the, the entire side of the cylinder was all sort of not softened, then I can go back and toggle on the control key and go over a few bit and then orbit. And instead of hitting the toggle again, I can just continue doing what I was doing and that would actually make the process a lot simpler as I don't have to hit the modifier key once again. And that applies same thing for the move tool as well. The good example would be when I'm copying this specific chair that I made, once I toggled on the copy key, I can just keep on clicking instead of trying to hit the modifier key again and again. So the good example that I can think of is when I actually make a sandbox, let's say the grid is about a foot and then make a surface like so. And in here, let's go ahead and drag up a couple of surfaces, maybe 10 feet. So I make a much larger surface here. So here, perhaps I can get um, maybe this tree import and that is very big tree so let's go ahead and scale that down and once i have the, this tree on its position now i can just toggle on the control key and then just keep on clicking from that point so that i can place that tree on the hill in the correct position hit control key once and then it sticks and i can just expect to click 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 Click. So that is much easier than hitting control key all the time. One of the little gripe that I have is actually if these boxes were not really made into a component and if I were to just do the same method of click, 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 click to basically copy over this thing. As you get away from the overlap, notice how that just now completely changed the way it looks and just basically a chunk of it gets taken out by the previous thing. So I wish it was a lot easier than that. For move tool, copy tool purpose, you can maybe click on this and then as you place it, you don't have to click once more again to lift that up. I think it would have been better if this key just kind of behaved that way. So as long as you have the copy function on, it just continues on rather than you having to click on the reference point once more. Now let's go to the next one that is called the right face up for push pull. And this is something that we always kind of had a little gripe about. So basically when you draw a surface and notice how that became white and sandbox tool perhaps is not really touched on just yet. Therefore, you see how when I made that surface, it became blue and blue basically tells you that the face has been reversed and it is exposing a side of SketchUp model that really shouldn't be shown. And we always get told no because it is quite important for rendering purposes and when you start to play with the material, making sure that all the surfaces are front facing is quite important. However, it made it extra difficult when things were reversed. So SketchUp used to draw the surface so that the back face is up. And when you push pull, it always became fine. It flips automatically and only white face shows up. However, the problem was that, let's say this is like a floor plan that you have drawn. And then let's say it is eight inch wall. Now, if you have push pulled the wall, Notice how the floor just remains as blue and now you start to draw different things in there and then push pull for the table 
and then a little TV stand or a chair. Now everything just kind of became blue inside. So that was a problem. However, now as things kind of show up as white, correctly facing up with the front face and then now if I go ahead and offset the wall and if I go ahead and push pull the wall and then a table and then also some chair even if I push pull those surfaces none of them become blue therefore only the bottom of it that has the single facing will have blue so we are basically less prone to accidents especially the people who's not used to this sort of front and back face concept will make less mistakes and that is going to save us from yelling at somebody or getting yelled at yes I'm gonna keep using the same whiplash reference Anyways, this function definitely is going to save some headache. Next one is pre-lock inferences. SketchUp allows you to lock the inferences or the axes as you draw. So for example, if you were to use line tool, you will see that as you hover over an area, it just sort of lines up with red, it's going to snap on there. Or green will basically snap there and blue. So this is called inferencing. And there are a few different ways to lock this behavior. Basically, you kind of hover over and as it snaps, you can hold down shift key to lock and then you can draw a distance that basically references this point here so I know I have drawn a line that is on the red axis and then I can go green axis that way or blue axis so even if I have drawn kind of like an arbitrary line I know for a fact that I have drawn correctly on 3d space and that is that much easier whenever I'm trying to draw in the 3d space and also one other method is to actually click on here and then hit the arrow keys so right for the red so I kind of remember as R for R and then left key for the green axis and then up for blue key and then down is a parallel which is a magenta line that gets introduced if you hit that once more again either parallel or perpendicular to the line that you are referencing so that is all great however it actually had to be activated after your first click but now you are able to lock that inference before you click on anywhere. Now I can hit the left arrow key and now I have pretty much locked onto green. It doesn't really show, but as I click on it, you'll see how it just locked onto that specific axis. And the behavior is going to be consistent throughout different tools that are available in SketchUp. It is not incredibly useful for me as I use the shift key for locking the axis in most case scenario. But for those of you who use the arrow key frequently, then I suppose that is available for you to use. But weird thing is that I still have to hold down. So this is not a toggle. It's not a toggle on modifier. I still have to hold down shift key. So there is a still bit of inconsistency. If the SketchUp team is listening, perhaps you can consider. So the shift key may, could be the toggle on key as well. I don't know, but yeah, currently it is still the hold down key, not a toggle. And if you were to go to those two documents that I have mentioned, I'll be sure to leave the link in the description. And this one is the blog post and standardizing SketchUp tools in the latest release. So it kind of verbally explained and there's some useful videos for you to watch and it kind of explained things in sort of the simple terms. So it is all useful. A couple of things that I did want to note is the fact that performance improvement for big mesh extensions, I do use quite a lot of extensions that deal with a lot of poly or the edges or mesh that it creates. So this is going to improve all of those times that I'm gonna have to spend waiting, especially for skimp, because I do use that extension quite often. And there are some updates for the extensions menu and live components, which I typically don't really use in a daily workflow or IFC4 classification. And I don't use layout in daily basis. Therefore, some of those things may apply to you, but it currently doesn't to me. And there are a few more things that are mentioned in the actual release note that is going to be more 
detailed. Feel free to check that out if you are willing to do some reading. And because of these few tool changes that has been applied on the new release, I'm gonna have to spend some time in my daily tasks of SketchUp usage to get a bit more acquainted with the new behavior since I have a bunch of muscle memory when I model inside of SketchUp. However, if you're a newcomer to SketchUp, you're going to have much easier time picking up all of these tools as it is now more consistent. So I think overall it is a good move from SketchUp's part to do this sort of overhaul of bringing consistency throughout the tools and I'm going to wrap up this video here today. If you have liked this content, please like and subscribe to my channel if you want to continue watching these type of videos. Thank you so much for watching my videos. As always, I'll see you next time. Bye.